Yeah, okay, me again. I did the Lunar Mission 1 talk first because I thought that would be the more, more exciting one, but obviously I'm, uh, I'm here with a branded shirt on that says ISU on it, so uh, I'm kind of obliged to, uh, whoops, I'm obliged to push the podium away. Um, I'm obliged to talk about ISU, so let me just reset my clock. And right, so the International Space University. Uh, first of all, who doesn't know about the International Space University? Because uh, you know, if everyone knows, then I'm kind of wasting my time. There's at least one, two, three people who don't afford. Phew. <laughs> Otherwise, this could make for a slightly more boring talk. So I'm from the International Space University, uh, which has its headquarters in Strasbourg in France. Um, it was founded uh, a bit over 25 years ago by some of those weird, enthusiastic space geek people who, you know, keep going around organizing things and making things happen. Here you can see them when they were looking kind of nice and young. Uh, left to right, Todd Hawley, um, uh, Bob Richards, and Peter Diamandis. Uh, Todd, unfortunately, is no longer with us, uh, but you'll have heard of some of the projects that, uh, that uh, Bob and Peter went to. Uh, later went on to, to work on and Moon Express, the, the X Prize, Zero Gravity Corporation, uh, and, and so on. Um, amongst the ideas that came out of this Space Generation Foundation that they set up was the idea of an international space university. Another was the Space Generation Advisory Council. Is Minu in here? No. Uh, we have SGAC people here as well. So ISU and SGAC, she, the SGAC share that sort of. Uh, uh, DNA. Um, our first Chancellor was uh, Arthur C. Clarke, who I think most of you will have heard of, uh, uh, and our current Chancellor is uh, a guy called Jean-Jacques Dordain, who I think lots of people will have, uh, you know, here will have heard of. Um, the very first activity was, a, was a, what was called the Summer Space Program, and it took place at MIT. Um, and since then, we've, we've gone on doing bigger and better things. The key thing about ISU is uh, we, are not a, we are not an engineering school. We're not a technical school. Uh, you can see here uh, our three key words, interdisciplinary, international, and intercultural. Uh, so on ISU programs, yes, there is technical stuff, but you will also find lots of, uh, lots of non-technical stuff. It, what we're trying to do is to build um, links between all these different fields. That's what we call the three eyes education. So these are the broad disciplines, if you like, that we're interdisciplinary that we cover. Engineering, science, human performance in space, space applications, you know, remote sensing, navigation, telecommunications, management and business, policy, economics and law, uh, and space uh, humanities. So very broad. Okay? You know, if you do an ISU program, yes, you'll get a lecture about orbit mechanics. Uh, you'll also get one about space art, uh, space philosophy, um, so it's, it's uh, you know, we are not scientists, engineerists, we are spacists, okay? That's how I define myself, I'm a spacist. I just happen to be a spacist who's a physicist turned engineer. So this is our map. We have about 4,000 alumni so far uh, from around 100 countries. We get very excited every time we can color in a new bit of the map. Uh, some of them are going to take a bit longer than others. I'm not sure when we will get our first student from North Korea, for example. I think that could be a, a little way off. But, uh, you know, so if you know any people in any of those countries that aren't colored in red who'd like to do ISU, you know, point them at us, because one day we want to have the whole map colored red. Um, we have on the main programs, the uh, so-called MSc in Space Studies, the MSS. I'm the program director of that, so I spend most of my time in, in Strasbourg organizing that. Uh, we have the Space Studies program. That moves around the world each year in a different location, runs for nine weeks over the Northern Hemisphere summer. That's why we changed the name. We, it was pointed out that calling it the Summer Space Program was Hemispherist, because if, if it went to Australia and other places like that, it's in their winter. So we, we still tend to call it the Summer Program, but it, SSP. And then we also have the Southern Hemisphere Summer Space Studies Program. Uh, it's a five-week program that runs uh, down in, in Australia, usually uh, in January, so our winter and their summer, and a one-week executive space course. So let's just kind of give you a, a broad idea of each of these. That's the master's program. Um, we have a start off with an introduction to space module, and then we have a talk module. Uh, and, but a key bit in the middle there is the interdisciplinary team project, what's labeled there as M3 uh, TPR, as well as an individual project. Um, someone in the building, I don't know, Leo, Leo Tini, who actually works here. Uh, Oh, there's Leo. Leo, Leo. Leo's a master's alum, so if you want to know about the masters, don't believe whatever I say. Talk to, talk to Leo, and he'll, he'll tell you the, the, 
the good bits and the bad bits. You know, don't believe anything he says about me though, unless it's good. You know, um, we have the the summer program. It's a nine-week program. Uh, uh, this moves around the world. As I've said, this summer it's going to be uh, in uh, Athens, Ohio. Uh, I didn't know there was an Athens in Ohio till we decided to go there, but uh, Athens, Ohio, in, in the U.S. Uh, next year it's in Haifa uh, in Israel. The year after that it's in Cork uh, in Ireland. And we don't know where it's going to be in 18 yet. Uh, so that's a, that's a, a sort of shorter, sharper version. Uh, Leo's also done the, the, the SSP, and Ryan, who's around here, one or two others, Remco, has, has done the SSP. So you can find out to, from them uh, what, what that is like. Uh, this shows you where we've been around the world. So uh, quite a lot in Europe, quite a lot in America, uh, one or two you know, visits uh, you know, to, to, to other parts of the world. So if you're from any other countries and you're interested in, you know, SSP going there, we would be pleased to, to initiate talks with you. Um, yeah, and this is the Southern Hemisphere Program, um, uh, Executive Space Program, picture of executives sitting around a table. Uh, this, is, this is more sort of typically for people who, who uh, are sort of working in the space sector, uh, but they don't come from a space background, so sort of finance, human resources people. Uh, you know, for, for space agencies, uh, space companies. Uh, they come to us in, in Strasbourg uh, uh, for a week. Um, but what does ISU mean? Why do we do all this? Well, uh, the reason I sort of moved from running an engineering program in the UK to running an interdisciplinary program in, in, in Strasbourg was because I thought it was the place that I could best contribute to moving our kind of future in space forward by trying to make, in particular, the master's program uh, uh, as good as possible turning out people who are going to go out and do kind of cool stuff in space. So it's really all about the people. It's about building the networks, uh, encouraging people to, to do new things, uh, to learn, to act, and to build our future in space. So uh, I, I don't know, is, uh, is Romain in the room at the moment? Romain, I hear a name check to Romain, okay. Uh, one of our organizers. Uh, this, for example, uh, is uh, you know, a recent... Team ISU. They've been. This is the Mars Desert Research Station. Does everyone know about MDRS? At least if they, you know, go there, um, simulate being on on Mars. Um, uh, and there are a number of teams that go there. And ISU alums have been there before. But this was the very first sort of all ISU team. Uh, and, and if you want to know more about that, uh, have a have a chat with uh, Roman. I wasn't sure what year Rebecca was. You know. It was eleven. Okay. Um, it was the year before I took over as program director, which is why I'm a little bit hazy about that. Um, uh, and then uh, you, you after that, uh, MSS 12, while they were doing their internships, uh, four, of, four of my master's students set up their own nano satellite company called Nano Satisfy. Uh, they were doing, uh, they're out at Ames mostly at, at that point. They crowdsourced on Kickstarter in excess of $100,000 to start it going. They've launched three satellites with Nano Satisfy so far. They now employ 20 plus people uh, they've raised, actually it's more than 25 million now, and they now have offices both in, uh, in the US, uh, Scotland, and Singapore. And the name of the company is now Spy. They just rebranded. So as an example, I mean, even I was impressed by that. I'm used to ISU people doing cool stuff, but to actually found your own satellite company while you're doing the course and raise $100,000, <laughs> oh, yeah, I was impressed. Um, here's a, a other bunch of kind of ISU people doing, doing stuff. Um, there's a, a, a team project, One Way to Mars, being presented at the IAC. The picture in the middle is ISU alumni at the, the International Astronautical Congress. Uh, this is just before Christmas in Strasbourg. We had our little astronaut panel with, uh, with three astronauts there. Uh, bottom left-hand corner, our librarian at, uh, uh, in Strasbourg. I managed to persuade her to let us do this, this kind of artistic and risk-taking exercise, which basically was run by uh, an artist called Alexandra Mir who is uh, well known in kind of space art circles. Uh, and, and this involves stacking things one on top of each other, which is, of course is quite spacey, but it also means that ultimately you're going to fail. If you keep going, it will fall over. Uh, and it's about learning to embrace the risk, understand the risk, understanding that you are almost certainly going to fail, and examining your own kind of reaction to that situation, particularly when you have a bunch of engineers who are used to trying to control everything. Uh, you know, you just tell them they will fail and just keep doing it. And I thought it was very brave of the librarian to let us build things up in the library and then have them all fall down. Um, uh, other, other things, um, this uh, thing in the top left-hand corner is called She, the Self-Deployable Habitat for Extreme Environments. This is a, 
uh, a project we're working on with a consortium of people from around Europe uh, with ISU alums in a lot of the other partner organizations. Uh, at the moment, uh, this is a this is actually a hardware-based project. It's not going to go to Mars, unfortunately. It's currently in Mars Say, though. See what I did there? <laughs> Mars Say. Uh, and it will be arriving at, at ISU over the summer, uh, and it will be used as a, as, a, as a test bed. It's a sort of collapsible um, habitat, which, when you press the button, expands out and bits fold down, and it provides accommodation for people. Parabolic flights. Uh, this is an experiment called SMILE. Uh, spun microgravity liquid experiment, which will be going to the International Space Station with nanoracks uh, in, uh, in December, as long as no rockets go boom in the meantime. Uh, and of course, what's this thing? Space up ISU. Um, yeah, you know what a space up is, I guess. Well, we have our own space up uh, on the weekend of the 11th, 12th April, uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't encourage you all to, to come and see us in Strasbourg. I mean, you can't have too much of a good thing, can you? This one's so much fun, you're gonna want another one very soon. Uh, here you can see the uh, our little organising team. You see, we have a bust of Yuri Gagarin as well. You see you know. So we have we have our own logo. So come to come to Strasbourg for Space Up uh, Space Up ISU. Uh, you know, if you want to know more about that, catch me later. Uh, that's it. If you have any questions about ISU, either you know, grab me or grab somebody who you know has been to ISU, or you can always email me or catch up with me uh, on Twitter. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Uh, are there any questions for Chris? Or did you all talk to him one-on-one -on -one already? I'm in my 40s, so can I apply for ISU? Absolutely. No, we, we've, had, we've had people older than you uh, come to ISU. And, and, and in fact, uh, we have quite a lot of Chinese. We have an arrangement with China, and uh, most of the people they send on the program are, are in their 40s, late 30s. So uh, you, you would be far from being the, uh, the, the, the oldest person there. Don't worry. <laughs> I just heard the ugliest person. <laughs> sounded like it. Sorry. Okay, who's next? Thank you very much, Chris.